great. All right, perfect. And uh, so, Jeff, your beard is definitely pin worthy. So, I don't, I don't, I yes. don't but it's just interesting that you speak of <laughs> just for girls, Jeff. It's just, it's for, just girls. for girls, what are guys? <laughs> No, uh, yeah, actually, it's because uh, uh, driving traffic is the main thing for me because um, I, the story is I started using Pinterest with, for my daughter, and uh, we, we were uh, pinning things to a secret board, and it took off, and I noticed how much it was driving traffic to a relatively new blog, and so uh, it was awesome, and so I just kind of dove into it, and I think it's still, you know, I tell people it's still like getting on the ground floor because it's still growing so fast, and there's still a lot of room to grow, so if you're not on Pinterest, especially if you're selling a product, you need to be on it. Yeah. Oh, no. And I definitely agree. I think it's something that's really exciting, uh, which I think, you know, we talk about products and services. And I think one of the most common questions that we all get um, working in the industry is, can boring so-called non-visual businesses actually use Pinterest? Um, so I started with Elisa first. So let's start with Jeff. Jeff, do you think that these boring non-visual businesses can use Pinterest and, and how do they accomplish that if they, if they can? Well, Lisa, I mean, she's a perfect example because she has so many people that uh, she gets um, for her client, she gets leads from Pinterest. Um, but yeah, um, if you're like, say a boring business, so give me a boring business that you're thinking of, like um, accounting, accounting. Okay. Well, I, what I would, <laughs> I've, all the accounts out there, Lisa thinks you're boring, but oh, I know. You. I love accounts. They're great. Um, because I could, I would be. We need you. Good. Yeah, I'd be in deep trouble with the IRS. Um, the thing is, um, what I do for accounts, I'd, I'd figure out what your your clients are asking the most of, like questions, like if they're trying to figure out how to save money, like um, you know, what what are some deductions I can take as a small business? Well, write a post about that, but create a great image, and then post uh, that image to Pinterest that links back to that article uh, on your site where you're, you know, you may have an opt-in box or, you know, schedule a free consultation or something like that on your page. And so use that to drive traffic, but start with the, the easiest way to find out to get content is find out what your clients are, what, what your clients are asking you. What, what do you, what can you save time for yourself with? If you can say, Hey, go look at this article. Uh, that's what I would start with first. Yeah. Well, you, you took, you know, the best answer. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, the, the great thing about it is that it all goes back to good online marketing as a whole, right? So that is just, that's good online marketing. So the part that comes in with the Pinterest, of course, is getting creative with your images. And Jeff does that really well by branding his images so that you know within half a second that this is one of Jeff's images. So you can have great subjects, but also um, just get creative with the images. Don't, don't post 100 pictures of spreadsheets because nobody cares, you know, kind of um, try to show the life you're trying to help your clients create on Pinterest, because that's what Pinterest is all about aspiration and becoming a better person and having a better life. So just promote that. Yeah, and I, I agree. I think it's really about, so, like Jeff had said earlier, it's about solving problems, making sure you know your audience's aspirations. Uh, you know, it's really interesting because people always go, well, I, you know, they have that quote unquote boring business. Uh, did Jeff just, did he just leave? I think I offended him. <laughs> Jeez, why, Jeff? You are, you know, Jeff. Don't be so sensitive. Jeez, so sensitive, I'm Jeff. Sorry. I clicked on the wrong button, so I don't know. Oh, see, that's his excuse for it's like actually I didn't like Elisa's answer, so I left. <laughs> <laughs> horrible, horrible. Answer. But uh, but the way I see things, I always tell people it's like you know every industry has a trade publication magazine. They they've got something that comes out every quarter or every month, and you've got to design a magazine cover somehow. And I think if you think of Pinterest as kind of your, your catalog or your quarterly magazine uh, and, and the kind of problems that you're, you're trying to solve, then I think Pinterest makes more sense in, in that perspective. Uh, so I think, uh, I think we kind of, you know, we, we, you know, we did a good job covering that. Uh, but if you do have a specific question, you know, really join in, uh, you know, just kind of click on and say, hey, you know, I got a question about uh, maybe it's insurance business or a non-service business you want to ask. Hey, so we got David Soma. Uh, so he's going to be joining us. So I'm going to accept his call. And uh, hey, guys, how you doing? Hey, hey, fantastic, David. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I do graphics, uh, but uh, basically for the past year or so, basically I developed a gymwear, beachwear line, Ooh. where everything that we sell triggers donations to animal rescues. 
Very cool. Oh, I love That's it. That's so cool. Uh, when it comes to Pinterest, I've been using it for uh, two years already. So basically, I mean, it started basically to me, it just started like just posting pictures. You know, basically a lot of stuff being like the ones, of course, that get the most either repins or basically comments and stuff like that. This is whenever I put the cute stuff off of the puppy dogs and stuff like that. That always gets, you know, you know, hits. And then also I have like another one that I have. It's just quotes, but it's quotes just for animal stuff. You know, like, you know, anything to do with animals, you know, quote wise, that's another box. And that one also gets a lot of hits, I think. But when I got, uh, when I get into like, you know, like the actual clothing part, all that, those, you know, the, you know, I'm sure they see them, but it's not basically what's driving them. So, I mean, I'm doing something, again, I've had Pinterest from kind of like sort of the beginning because kind of like the same thing I did with Twitter. When I got Twitter, I didn't understand. I mean, Pinterest is different because it's visual. And since I'm a visual guy, that it kind of worked better for me. But with Twitter, when it first came out back, what is it, 2009, 10, I can't remember, I created an account. It was there stagnant until now that basically Lab and <clears throat> Periscope came up. It's now is when I started using it. So basically, in the process of less than a month, I've taken my Twitter account from like 30 followers that was there for I don't know how many years to like almost 350 now. <laughs> so how do you? So oh, go ahead, Jeff. I was gonna say why don't you put your Pinterest uh, thing so if people want to go join your board, just put it in the chat or the comments so we can all go over there and, and check out your account. Yeah. So uh, that was all I was gonna say. Go ahead, Vincent. <laughs> It's yeah, the same, it's the same as the. I mean, literally, I use the same name across the board. So let me cool. get the link uh, go back to your window. So, David, do you feel like uh, Twitter is working better for you than Pinterest, and you're trying to figure out how to get more traffic? Well, I'm trying. I mean, since I saw you guys had a room open on Pinterest, since I have a pretty, I'm not gonna say a decent following because I mean, I forget that Pinterest exists a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> Totally honest here. Like, uh, so a lot of times, actually, I have it set for my images. So I really don't have to look for them. You know, like, since I do graphics, I'll create the images, you know, for promotions or whatever. And I'll put them on, you know, I have separate boards all around. So I just get them from here because it's a lot easier for me just to go directly to a place since I already created them, put, slap them on Pinterest. And so I could post them in other social media things, you know, maybe Instagram. That's see, Instagram works really good for me. I would think so. For but me. Pinterest should work for you too. Right. So are are you are you blogging? No, I'm not a blogger. Okay, that to me, you really that's the way to get traffic back to your website is to have really great content so that your images link back to that great content, and you could make fabulous images if that's your thing, you know, and just link back to your blog. And that's really where Pinterest becomes a strong performer. Right. Cause I mean, like I said, the blogging part is not my thing. Actually when you guys like Periscope and blog lab came around, that opened a whole new door, you know, like my brain started going. Yeah. I mean, you <laughs> can get help. You can get help with blogging. People can do it for you. And I hate blogging too. And that's why I do video. That's why I do my shows at Google Hangout, which I make to a podcast that I put as a blog post. So, and you know, so, sorry, go ahead, Jeff. That was, the, I mean, that's the thing. So, yeah, play to your strengths. I, that's what I would say. Yeah. So, David, it's the same thing, too. I think everybody has their preferences for a, a type of medium they like to create, Periscope or whether it's Blab. And I think the great thing is you can actually redirect people. Uh, and something we'll talk about uh, is, you know, you can redirect people. Uh, from an image directly to any specific URL that you want. So you can go ahead and create 100 blabs um, and then create like an image for that and then redirect people there. So that's that's the great thing about it. Don't worry. I mean, really, I'm, I'm ahead of the game. I'm not too much like, <laughs> I, already, I already sort of kind of created it. Like, oops. Like, I already created, you know, like, you know, try to send people traffic. I already added the image. I have a, you know, but that will go directly to the site. If I want to, I mean, I could always direct them to a Pinterest page or an Instagram page or whoever it might be, you know? 
Yeah, and I think it's a lot of patience. It takes a lot of time. You, you really, I think that's the thing too. Um, you know, one of the things that I really suggest you do is, I know that you don't, you're not really trying to compete with other people, um, but definitely take a look at some of the search terms that people are using. So, for example, if you, you know, you look at what other nonprofit organizations are doing, and I think if you look at their the pictures that they're using, you kind of get a, a theme. You know, what's popular, what's what's not. Uh, like you're saying, you get a lot of repins for, for the cute stuff, um, but kind of take away, you know, look at the non-cute things that, that tend to get popular. And I think that might help a lot. Um, so, David, we're going to cut you a little short because we want other people to kind of jump on the blab and ask some questions. But we really do appreciate so much. And again, uh, you know, check out David's uh, Pinterest account. He did put it on the side. Uh, and his, his uh, website is heroikx.com. Heroix. So. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Well, it's just because it's recorded for audio as well. So it's uh, that way people know for sure. But thank you, David. Really appreciate your question. Bye. So let's kind of, and I really appreciate that, David. Thanks so much. Um, so we have a, let's see, what, what is it? We have a question. Um, what do the streamers think about Pinterest's push for retail pins, the commercialization of Pinterest? Ooh, that's a good hot button question. So the commercialization of Pinterest. Um, Alisa, you want to take it off? What do you think about the whole? Yeah. Um, you know, on a lot of platforms, it, it turns people off. But I think Pinterest has been very smart. They have always put the user experience first, no matter what. So I feel like the way that they're doing it is very... Um, it's very friendly. It's actually helpful. And so I'm, I'm excited about it. I just bought my first thing on, off of Pinterest the other day and it was painless. It was probably too easy, um, but I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. How about you, uh, Mr. Manly, Manly Jeff? Uh, um, what's, what's your take on commercialization versus kind of just let things my, be the my, way they be? Well, my thing is, is they got to make a profit. I mean, they, they have to. I mean, all these things that we play with and have fun with for free, They've got to make a profit. So I, and they're doing it in a way that I don't feel it's as spammy or it really detracts from the experience yet. I don't think they're going to, like Lisa said, they're really trying always to take care of the user experience. So I don't think it's going to be bad. I think, I think it's genius because I think it's, they drive so much traffic for Black Friday and the holiday sales anyway. I think being able to do this, you're going to see their numbers go bonkers this year again. Um, and just, and, and the, the, it's really interesting to me is that they're using Apple Pay. They're not really making any money on transactions. They're going to be making their money off of promoting those tra uh, transactions. So I think that's an interesting play uh, by Pinterest. And so I think long term, I think when they open it up for WordPress people for like, if I'm selling an ebook or somebody could just cl click on buy it now on Pinterest, mm -hmm. I think that's really going to open it up to a lot of things. And I think that's coming down the road. I mean, right now it's just uh, the big boys like Neiman Marcus and what are the other one? Neiman Marcus. Drums. Yeah. But, you know, a site, shell, site sell and another place lets you do uh, get on a list to get the the, uh, the buy it now buttons. But, you know, when it rolls out to more people, I think it's going to be a game changer. Yeah. And I, well, I think that it's I mean, it's interesting when we talk about commercialization of Pinterest and, um, you know, it's like like uh, anti some let me if I am pronouncing it incorrect, I do apologize, Simulacra. Um, you know, there's a lot of early adopters. There's a lot of people that, that are going to get annoyed. But the, the truth is, it, you know, I think everybody has to make a living somehow. Mm -hmm. um, what you're probably going to get pretty annoyed about, and I, I think this is starting to be the buzz as well, is that uh, there's been some talk that the organic reach actually has actually decreased uh, within Pinterest as of recently. So there's been a lot of talk among some influencers that, you know, we're, we're not seeing the reach uh, that we used to. And I'm, when I'm saying that, I, you know, there's like a, I, I perceiving there's like a 20 to 30% drop in reach, um, which means I think they're really going to be pushing towards uh, the promoted pins, the advertising. Uh, and really it's going to be similar to Facebook's pay to play model. I don't think things are going to come for free. Uh, I mean, this is, this thing is evaluated what, like $5 billion. Um, so, but we want to, we don't want to take up, you know, we don't want to talk too much about the negative things because really what we're here for is to talk about how to drive traffic to your site um, so, uh, Elisa, can you kind of share just maybe a general tip? What, what's a general tip that our, our audience on Blab um, can use regarding driving more traffic to their site? Okay. Uh, well, something I like to do when I when I write a blog post is I always, of course, have a pinnable image. And in that image, for the alternate text, I will write a pin description. So it, rather instead of having it just come up as when you click pin, 
Um, if you haven't set your alternate text thoughtfully, it might come up as just the image name. So it might just say boy with ball JPEG, which is a terrible Pinterest description, right? So if you take the, a few minutes just to, um, to craft a better description that goes right in your alternate text, um, and even sometimes I like to put in the URL right to that blog post because I do think it encourages people to click through from your pin because they don't have to click to open the pin and then go to your website. They can just do it from the description and the feed. That's my, my thought anyway. Jeff, your manly tip. What's your manly tip? Uh, for me, you know, make sure you're optim a couple things. One that you're optimizing for mobile because they say 80. Well, people inside of Pinterest have uh, said it's almost closer to 90% of all traffic is coming from mobile device. So you want to make sure those images and those text overlays that you can see them really well on a mobile device and check that and test it with different. It looks different on my iPhone 6 Plus than it does on my son's iPhone 5. And so uh, you need to check and make sure you can read all those things. Um, the other thing I like to do, uh, at least to talk about descriptions, you know, make sure you're writing good descriptions. But since I have people on my show or if I'm mentioning them on a uh, blog article, like if I have uh, Vincent on my show, I will at mention them just like I do on Twitter, but I at mention their uh, Pinterest handle. And so when somebody repins my pin, Vincent gets a notification. So that gives me a little social proof with my uh, pin descriptions. It, it lets people know, hey, it's, it's worth being on my show or, oh, Jeff, you know, that, that was great for Jeff. And so they may repin it again. And so using those at mentions on Pinterest are a really good way to uh, you know, kind of draw attention to somebody in the article. Yeah, that's perfect. It's interesting because I was actually going to mention a tip, but uh, Digital Camille actually talked about it. So uh, Digital Digital Camille, did you actually want to jump onto the Blab and actually explain that tip to our audience? I'd, I'd love to have you on if that's all right. Go, go, go. And now, now it's all waiting in suspense. I'm waiting in suspense. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Oh, oh, she says she can at the moment. Oh, Next time. And, you know, <laughs> she's got good sense of humor. She's got the ha ha. And you know, it's funny because then you know how people are saying there's a decrease in the LOL movement. Digital yeah. Camille just contributed to the decrease in the LOL moment. This is terrible. Mm -hmm. um, oh, but anyways, Digital Camille said that basically uh, it seems so obvious. Um, but basically, she was saying that what happens is you can upload your pins uh, and then link it directly back to actually any URL that you want. So when you upload a pin on Pinterest, uh, and this happens to uh, this happened to my favorite company, which is Marvel Entertainment. They were uploading these comic pins, but when they uploaded it, they weren't aware that you can actually go and, and click on the edit button and change the, the URL back to, to any page that they wanted to. So they could have gone back to their e-commerce page. And because they were literally getting like tens of thousands of repins um, that were literally going nowhere when people clicked onto their site. So, so don't make that mistake. Uh, I think it's something that you, you wanna make sure you do every single time. Um, I also wanna just kind of uh, mention really quickly, again, if you happen to be on the desktop version of Blab, you know, tell that little bird, click on it, because one of you uh, that clicks on it will also be able to get to three months of free access to my Pinterest to Profits course. So make sure you tweet that. Oh, what, <laughs> Jeff's like, oh, yeah. How do I tweet uh, it? Can I do it from it? No, I'm cheating. Yeah, but you can tweet it out, and I'll make sure one of uh, one of you um, that uh, that tweets it out will be able to get free access. So I'll make sure to tweet you. Um, oh, Sam's so trying to get it. Sam wants it. <laughs> <laughs> there's, Sam, there's like, sorry. Oh, I was gonna say Sam had a really great question for you. Oh yeah, no, that's are, are we talking about the one with the uh, the Google ranking or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, you're you're my my Pinterest search dude. Oh, no, but here, well, let, I'm going to let, because uh, Elisa's got like a good speaking voice. So, Elisa, do you want to to <laughs> explain the question and then I'll, I'll answer it? I know it's a very odd format. <laughs> okay, no, well, Sam wants to know oh, if we actually, know. Okay, no, we'll, we'll answer Sam's question and we'll get right to you, Austin. Okay, um, Sam wants to know how you get, um, where did it go? Okay, how you get a board to rank on the first page of Google for search engine results. Yeah, um, and I have one. Because Okay, okay, because she's seen that a lot of them that are number one on Google don't even really have that many followers or repins. So what are they doing, Jeff? <laughs> they are doing, they're writing good uh, descriptions for their boards and titles. Um, you don't want to title your board to be something like Stuff I Love. Well, what, <laughs> right. what does that mean for people on Pinterest? In fact, if you Google right now instant Instagram tips, you'll see my group board with Peg Fitzpatrick and myself as number one because... We have it's instant Instagram tips, and then I have a good description that's you know tips and tricks for Instagram. So 
it ranks number one on Google. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. If they really think hard and work on their titles and their descriptions, those bank those boards can really rank on Google. And Google and Pinterest have a really good relationship. Yeah, and I, I couldn't agree more. And I think that sometimes when we talk about uh, Pinterest and Google, somehow it's like this, it's really hard to do. Um, but I think the reality, Sam, is that it's, it's actually a lot easier to do if you, you know what kind of long tail keywords you want to go. Um, often it's not necessarily about the number of repins, but Jeff was saying having those uh, the right keywords in the pin description uh, and also actually updating it uh, on a regular basis because because Google does like fresh content, uh, it's something that they want to do all you want to do all the time is to update. Um, so, for example, like you're asking, what about a generic title like "kids rooms" versus, uh, versus "black and white uh, kids rooms"? Um, I definitely would go with the second one. Um, I think you're going to be easier found uh, if you want to do "kids rooms" on on Google, and you can do that with Pinterest. Then I will pay you five hundred dollars <laughs> to teach me how to do that because I don't know how you get, you can do that. Um, but it is possible. It's just that it takes a lot of dedication to to do kids rooms. Um, so I think that that's the, um, that's and the hard you, part. Yeah. And it's a good point, but do you really want everyone who wants kids rooms or do you have a product that is specific to black and white kids rooms? In which case you definitely don't want just everybody. You want that specific niche audience. So I, I feel like if you can create that niche content to fill it up and you can find lots of great stuff to fill it up, do it. So let's, uh, I think Austin's got a question. He's been waiting patiently. So let's get Austin on board and see what his question is. Hi guys. Hey, hey Austin. Austin, how you doing? Excellent. Um, so I've actually come in like halfway through this, so you might have covered this already. But what are your favorite tools to use when you're talking about Pinterest? That's so funny because that's actually on the agenda today, but we didn't get to that. Um, so I, I'm going to start first. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I am a, and I, I want to disclose because this is this is something that's important. Um, I'm a big fan of Tailwind. Uh, Tailwind is actually a sponsor for our conference. So I want to get that out of the way. Uh, and I do work with them. But I love Tailwind because, number one, uh, you can schedule pins anytime, anywhere. I took a three-week vacation. Um, I think, Elisa, you love their Discover content. Um, yeah, so do you want to talk a little bit more about the Discover content for Austin? Because I, I think a lot of people don't know you can do this with Tailwind. Well, it's a beta feature, too. So if you log in and you don't see it, you can ask them to turn it on, and they will. And tell Melissa, I'm sorry. Because <laughs> I'm telling everybody about it, so I hope I don't break it. But basically, it's like if you use Feedly or another kind of RSS reader, um, can you mute yourself for just one second? Because you're getting a lot of, yeah, just for one sec. Um, I'm mobile. I'll mute you. I, I got you. I'll let you out in a minute. <laughs> yeah. but, um, but that's, that's how loyal Austin is. He's on mobile listening to us right now, right? So I got to give him, I got to give him, a, yeah, I, mean, I got to give this guy a few feels because of that. Yeah. I know it sounds weird, but anyways. No, I couldn't, um, I couldn't get to work on mobile, yeah. but, um, so but yeah. Talk so, about this, yeah. Okay. Content Discover. It's like, if you use Feedly or some other kind of RSS reader to keep track of your favorite blog posts, you can put all of those wonderful blog URLs into your content discover tab in Tailwind. And those the images from those blogs will come up there. So you just have to click on the on the image and select a board and schedule. It takes half a second. The other great thing you can do is you can have it suggest articles and images based on your board title. And it is just a huge, huge time saver that has made a world of difference to me. All right, perfect. And Jeff, how about you? I know you've got some awesome tools. Uh, which ones can you recommend for Austin? Uh, Tailwind is the big one I use too, but the one I also use a lot is uh, a, a, it's a premium WordPress plugin called uh, Social Warfare. And what it lets me do is, if, like, if you click on the this uh, social button for Pinterest, it will actually I can actually select the pin that I want to use for that pin, and it, the results it lets me. Uh, Instead of, you know, some of those, when you click on like the Pinterest pin it button, you'll see all those images and you have to select one of them. This lets me tell them, just, it already pre-populates that. It pre-populates the description. It's awesome. Uh, my social shares have jumped up because of I've been using that plugin. So I'm a big fan of that as well. And uh, yeah, so you can, I mean, hey, here's a little plug. If you go to my website, mailingpinterest.com forward slash tackle box, you can download all my tools and get them there <laughs> for free. <laughs> so Jeff, um, are you, you're on a desktop right now. You want to put that on the side so that way Austin can have that as a reference. It, um, yeah, it has Tailwind on there. It has the social warfare. It has all those. So, yeah. and one of one of my favorite tools is Canva. 
canva.com. I think most people know about that now, but you just, you never have to worry about what size to use for any platform, but it's especially great for Pinterest. How about you, Austin? Is there a tool that you use for Pinterest or something you like to use for creating visuals? I'd love to hear what your favorite tool is. Sure. Um, I use, I use uh, Tailwind also. I think it's a phenomenal tool. Um, there's one I've been trying out and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if it's a great tool yet or not, but I'll throw it out there to see what you guys think. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's called Viral Root. It's it's a a tool that collects seeds. That's their currency, which you can then use to help promote your content with real users. And I've been getting massive amounts of new followers and repins, which I wanted to test how effective it was outside of of the platform so i put a couple of pins and i only promoted them through that tool and i've been getting signups and i've gotten more traffic and i've actually gotten organic pins from it which i thought was very interesting it's a little gamification so i'm not sure how i feel about it but nevertheless it's been pretty effective so far you know I, that's awesome i used that a lot when i first got started and it was huge it really did make a difference when i started doing it now I just don't see anything. I don't know if it's after a certain amount. Um, but can you can you put your uh, Pinterest boards on the side so we can see those as well as possible so we can uh, I can go look at those. But yeah, uh, when I first got yeah. started, Bible really gave me almost snowball my account when I first started using it. But uh, yeah, it's, it was very effective. Sure. Um, I actually dropped it in there. I put Pinterest.com slash Science Inc, which is my my main page and then my boards are all up on there so okay cool yeah because you'll see it just below mark huber um so austin we really do appreciate your question and, and the suggestion for viral root i think it's awesome i use it myself uh happy pinning buddy um so hopefully we get to see you next time on blab thanks a lot and so <laughs> anyways i cut off on hey austin if you're still there i apologize i, I do apologize i know it seems it's uh, it's kind of rude I know. How could I? I just cut someone off. So Austin, my, 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 seriously, my bad. I do apologize. Um, so it says right here that we have a few requests for Tina. So uh, Tina, jump on board, you know. Um, so, come on, Tina. Don't be quiet. Everybody come wants on, you. Come on, Tina. Jump in. Jump in. <laughs> Why are you doing this to us, Tina? You're embarrassing me in front of live studio audience. You, you know what that's? There you go. Oh, there you go. Dun, dun, dun. I'm not going to turn the camera on, Paula. <laughs> <laughs> Tina, for those of you who don't know, while she's while she's uh, loading up here, she works with scalable social media, and she is a pinning ninja. So uh, I don't know what I would do without her. Hi, Tina. Hey, Tina. Hello. <laughs> she gave into this. I'm gonna pay you for this. <laughs> I know you are. I will never live it down. But you really, you do a great job with Pinterest and uh, driving traffic to the website. So you had to be here. Yeah, I agree, which actually is great because Tina's here, which um, which you guys, like all of us, can discuss. Um, so, you know, when we talk about Pinterest, a lot of it is about visual design. Uh, what kind of, you know, pins in terms of visual design drive traffic or maybe the elements of a pin? So, um, Tina, since you're kind of our guest of honor, um, can you tell me what's your experience with what type of pins, what type of design, tips? I mean, we'd love to hear that. Oh, oh, I think I don't think we can hear you. I think you're uh, unfortunately it's I'm off. Gonna have to your Is it off? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Try speaking. Is it, it is better, which is I'm which speaking. is awesome. Okay, so perfect. Okay, you can hear me now. <laughs> no, okay. she keeps um, getting. Okay. Well, am I there? Yes. <laughs> Okay. Um, I think that, you know, obviously a lot of folks by now know that the vertical tall images do the best. Um, but personally, I think that there's, I like less is more when it comes to graphic design for Pinterest. I think less text. I think that um, even in fonts, I, I tend to like a streamlined font, you know, more of a sans font when it comes to things. So um, and obviously a really quality image. I, I, it amazes me how many businesses are still using really crummy images, <laughs> the quality isn't very good. Um, and so I think that less is more, quality is everything. Um, even a call to action isn't a bad idea when it's done appropriately. 
Um, and I think those things are really important for good graphics. How about uh, you, Jeff? I mean, you have some really uh, great pins that, I mean, people love them. Um, what are some tips that you can give for people that they can take away? I think I'm with Tina. Sometimes the, uh, if, don't stretch your graphics. I mean, come on, folks. It's we're in 20. <laughs> we, we should know how to crop our graphics right. Don't stretch your graphics so your guys look proportion wrong. <laughs> uh, and I still go back always to the mobile stuff, you know, and like what Tina said, Watch those scripty fonts. I know a lot of mom bloggers like to use those. I don't know if I'm supposed to say mom bloggers because I guess it's not politically correct anymore. But who cares? Um, the thing is, is that the scripty fonts, you can't read. You can't read them. And so especially when they get shrunk down. And so that and um, if you're using those stinking pop-ups on your website, make sure they're not on mobile. If I can't close that X when that pop-up comes up, I'm not going to read your article. So stop it. Wow. Jeff, have you had lunch? <laughs> oh, I'm very hungry. Yeah. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> so, uh, so Lisa, how about yourself? What are what are some design tips that you might be able to offer, or just things that you see work visually very well on Pinterest? Yeah, well, I think that it, Pinterest is very interesting in that what goes well on Pinterest is pretty much the opposite of Instagram. So you want the warmer colors on Pinterest, avoid your blues and yellows and greens and go for more reds and oranges. Um, also faces don't tend to do real well in Pinterest images. There, there are exceptions. Sometimes um, children do really well or just like a part of a face. Um, but then too, when you, if you have a product, you want to try many different setups for it. So you want to really show the product in action, in use, um, making someone's life better, right? How you're actually going to use it in real life. Plus, you also want to have the actual product images. So um, just a little bit of everything. And don't try to make in Instagram work on Pinterest because it will. I mean, even as far as the saturation of your images, um, very different from platform to platform. Yeah, and, and I agree. Every, I mean, every platform has to be very different. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to go kind of a little bit on topic and a little bit off topic in terms of design. So something that I actually discovered, which was really interesting because we talk about driving traffic back to your site. Uh, you know, Tina's talking about using the right font uh, and, and Jeff's talking about having everything on mobile. So this is really interesting. So I found that working on sites that if you have a lot of pretty pictures, there's a chance that your, your pin will go viral. So it, it, it just goes off. But what's really interesting is that you may not get that much traffic from that compared to, I think, if you created a pin that had like the, the, the title, it was relevant to the audience at that moment. What you might find in the long run is that even though you get less repins from uh, what I would say kind of like a, a pin that's designed with, with a blog post in mind, with a title, a relevant context, those types of pins will probably drive more traffic over time than just pretty pictures. So again, if you have a lot of cake photos, uh, you might have a really close up. For example, I've discovered this recently that apparently close ups of food photos are doing very well because I believe what Jeff said, they, they look great on mobile. But I do believe that I don't think they're necessarily driving the, the type of traffic versus how to make the perfect uh, cake in five steps. Um, so I think having that type of visual context and, and relevancy is, is really important. Um, so anyways, uh, Tina, we don't want to embarrass you anymore because <laughs> I know we kind of forced you on to, to <laughs> Um, so, so thank you so much, Tina, because we want to see if anybody else wants to jump on and see if there's any questions. Uh, hopefully you were, you know, you don't see it as a, a rude gesture, but we, we do love you. We love you. Right. So I hit the road. Jack. I see you later, Tina. Hey, something that brought, uh, uh the thing uh, that you were just talking about, Vincent, there's, you know, here's a big secret. It's okay to have more than one image for a driving traffic back to your site. Oh yeah. yeah. So uh, if so, if an image isn't working well, there's nothing wrong with pinning another one and seeing if it does better. I know Elisa does, I stole that from Elisa. That's what I do now. <laughs> and, and going back to some of your evergreen posts, if you want to refresh them, create a graphic and, um, and post and try that and see if that works. Another thing you can do is see what's trending on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. I know if, if like, if I'm um, doing for, uh, you know, I'm, I have a client who's a, a chocolatier has a chocolate factory. And so I'll go and search chocolates and see which pins that have to do with chocolates are doing really well and see if I can not duplicate, but have the same style or maybe the, the font's this big, it's this, and it's this kind of color and see how that works. So use that Pinterest search to your advantage and see what other people are doing. That's a great point. We do the same thing and that even helps us with our content strategy as well. So if we see that, um, 
well, with chocolates, it, we can see obviously seasonal that's coming up, or if we see that dark chocolate is big, we might write a blog article about that. Um, it's super, it's just so so many insights you can get just for free. Oh yeah, I, I completely agree. Uh, and so just to let you know, uh, we appreciate Steve Dotto who's joined us. Uh, Steve Dotto is actually hosting a Blab later on uh, with um, Steve. Let me know if I, I got this wrong, but I, th I think it's with Vivica von Rosen and with Subi Zimmerman. Uh, that's happening in a few hours. So make sure you follow Steve. Uh, again, loving this Blab. Thank you, Mark, uh, from X Success on the fly. That's really great. And we got a question here from E Pressure Cooker, which is, are you just manually searching the Pinterest results to see what's trending or are you doing something else? Uh, Jeff, you want to take that away? Yes, <laughs> that's fine. Yes, I'm doing both. And so, you know, I'll see what's trending and see what kind of the general kind of look and maybe what's going on. Because there, there, there's actually days that things do better on Pinterest. And gosh, you, who had that article? I know it was out there somewhere. Um, uh, but there's certain things that do better, like um, health and fitness does better on some day. And, you know, food does better and humor does better on another day. Um, but um, I do a, a kind of a general search to see what's going on. And then I also like I'll search chocolates when I was trying to figure out the chocolate thing. So. I do a mixture of both and then I kind of play with those two. Ooh, it's, it's kind of my I have another favorite tool that I love for a lot of different reasons is BuzzSumo. And oh, yeah, that. so you can see what is being pinned most. If you go into buzzsumo.com, you can use a free account, um, enter in your, your subject and it will show you what has been shared most on Pinterest. So uh, t Tina brings up a good point, uh, which she says uh, repins are a great indication of what users are interested. Uh, definitely, I mean, that's probably the ultimate way to see what people are interested in, because if, if you're willing to repin, uh, obviously you want to share it with some of your audience or you want to bookmark it. So I think that that is really good. Um, I tried to actually, it's interesting. I tried to type in the website buzzsumo.com. I don't see it showing up on the side. Um, so maybe it's just a temporary thing. Another thing, uh, Vincent, is um, what I do a lot of is I use Tailwind. I see what my what board is the most popular right at the time, and I'll go, okay, people are hungry for that on that board. So, like, if I have blogging tips and tricks or something like that, and it's getting a lot of repins, that board is, then I say I need to feed that a little more. And if something's maybe waning, maybe I'll try feeding that or, you know, or tweak some stuff. So always check your analytics. And if you don't have Tailwind, use um, just your Pinterest analytics because those are really – powerful as well. Perfect. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, we're talking a lot about driving traffic. Uh, let's get into more of a, I would say, semi-controversial topic, which is group boards. Um, group boards, yay, they're great, or nay, not so great? Both. <laughs> yes. I think that, I think group boards are awesome if you can find the right one. And, and don't be afraid to leave sucky ones. I mean, really, I mean, you're not if they stink, then leave. You don't have to be in there. And so finding good ones, and usually I have found the good ones are invite only. And you usually get invited to them. Mm -hmm. Those are the really good ones. So. Yeah, and, yeah, and I find that, you know, like depending, like you're saying, Jeff, I think early days, um, you know, everybody was massively inviting somebody else into their group boards. And that's why sometimes you see 5,000 contributors to these group boards. Um, but I think that there is what... Uh, Here's so I kind of defending group boards in a certain sense that number one, I think Pinterest has been very good at trying to get rid of spam within group boards now. It used to be a huge problem. Uh, it's less of a problem now. Um, I do find that when you join a group board that, um, you know, if you join the right one that is relevant to what you're pinning, you, you still get lots of exposure. Uh, you get less spammers. Um, but like Jeff was saying, you, you got to be very careful. Uh, if you're looking for a tool um, that works out great, just searching for group boards, um, you know, check out pingroupie.com. So it's P-I-N-G-R-O-U-P-I-E.com. Uh, that's one of my favorite tools for looking at uh, for group boards. Um, so how about, Elisa, what's your take on group boards? Is it kind of like a yay, nay, depends? Yeah, it depends. And I think that the biggest problem with group boards is me. <laughs> and that sometimes I forget. I forget about them. Um, but they can be super valuable, especially if you're just starting out. Like um, I pin almost exclusively on scalable social media for a long time and I ignored my own personal brand. So now I'm starting out Elisa and Meredith with only like 1400 followers. So it's kind of sad, but if, if I join a group board, I'm going to get the exposure to all those people on that group board, plus the people following them potentially. 
Um, and then, of course, if people are signed up for email notifications to that board, they're going to see Elisa Meredith just pinned to that board. So I think they can be real valuable. But I also think like you and I, last week, we were looking at some Tailwind analytics on the group boards with like 83,000 members and the, the viral score was real low on them. However, still, if you do the math, and I'm terrible at math, but I think you told me it was right. <laughs> you still are going to get more action from those boards than from some of your own. If you only have a few. For sure, yeah. So, oh, oh go ahead, Jeff. I just wanted to say because I I sucked at group boards when I first got started. I mean, I just now have changed my group board strategy, and I tell you what has made the biggest difference is Tailwind and their interval pinning. Because what I do is I set up. I have my group boards, and so when I because you don't want to spam group boards and a lot of them have rules that, you know, they only want certain pins certain days or so many times. So what I'll do is I'll set up all my group boards with my new uh, pin that I have made for my blog article or my show or whatever. And then I'll set the interval for one day. So only one group board will get that pin a day and I'll do it for all my group boards. And it is so easy. It's one click. It's set up. It's scheduled. It is awesome. And uh, yeah, that, that, to me has made group it's changed my group how i do group boards and it's and it's made a huge difference that's a great tip so. Yeah. And we, we, you know, we want to let people know that are just joining into the Blab, uh, just so you know, Tailwind, you can actually try out for free, but it is a paid service. But I, I, here's, here's my experience, because I, when I switched to paid over a few years ago, I realized like this was, this was major, it was actually worth uh, the extra money. So definitely, if you're serious about your Pinterest marketing, uh, check it out. Um, so uh, e-pressure cooker, uh, sorry, I know you were trying to get onto the Blab earlier, we we're trying to make sure um, to answer questions first, but uh, the question is, how are you scheduling pins? Is it through Tailwind? Uh, I can tell you, um, I use Tailwind for, for all my scheduling, but Buffer is an alternative. If you're not trying to schedule like 500 pins in a month, uh, Buffer is a great alternative. Um, how about you guys, Lisa, what, uh, what's your favorite scheduling tool? Uh, yeah, I love Tailwind and it is absolutely my favorite. I use Buffer too, but Tailwind is my go-to for clients too, because it's so easy to switch between accounts. I and what I tell people I say if you're just getting started in Pinterest and want to and getting started in scheduling pins use Buffer because it, it does do a good job and I love I use Buffer every day for everything except for I just Tailwind I started using that for scheduling pins before they even came out with it it's part of my process and it just it's just awesome and so but if you're just getting started Buffer is fine to use but if you want to take your Pinterest and pinning to the next level then investment in Tailwind really does make a difference and so especially if you're a store and you're selling products, and I already said this, but uh, it's a really good thing uh, to check your analytics because it, it does offer some really good analytics and the scheduling features uh, for like your products you're going out and get is awesome on Tailwind as well. Okay, perfect. Great answer, Jeff. Uh, so we're going to be trying to wrap up this hour. So again, if you have a question, um, you know, you can either ask on the side of the blab or, hey, feel free to jump on. You know, we'd love to see you. We'd love to interact with you. Love to hear your question live. Uh, so don't be shy. So you got a question, jump on. If you have to wait a little bit, it's only because we're trying to finish up a, a specific topic first. Uh, it's not like we're trying to be rude, um, but, you know, really do appreciate it. Um, so let's... <laughs> Are you pointing at that X so I can close you down? No, I think you just I'm like are you pointing at that X like I need to close you down. I'm, like, I'm pointing at you because you're the rude. Everyone, one. Knows. I don't care. Everyone knows how rude Vincent is. I, I can be. It's the Canadian side of things, <laughs> yeah. right? So, um, so let's talk about uh, a very fascinating topic, uh, which is you know promoted pins. Um, what are they? Are they useful? What should we expect from them? Because uh, so much has changed in the last month with the promoted pins. Um, I'm going to start off with the, the man of the hour. Uh, let's start off with Jesse. What's what's your take with the, the new promoted pins, the formats? Yay, nay? I, I love promoted pins, especially now they're, they're pretty cheap and, you, and you're only paying for the initial pin, not the repins. I do not get engagement pins. Unless you're a big brand, I think that's the only reason if you want to have – and what an engagement pin is is when you – you're paying for people to click on it, enlarge it, to see it bigger. Um, the promoted pins that first started out are, are kind of the general, you click for traffic. And that's kind of what I experimented with. I didn't see anything happen with engagement pins. Um, the, I love how you can target people. I'm, I'm really looking forward to them, to them uh, drilling down uh, with their targeting because when they can do like what Facebook does now, because, you know, if I, have a, if I have a client and they have X amount of money 
and they're trying to figure out, you know, where to spend their advertising money. Uh, Facebook still has, you know, I can target for realtors, people who are interested in moving in a 50 mile radius of my town. That is huge for, for getting the most bang for your buck. Now I try to do both. I try to do a short term strategy with Facebook and a long term strategy with uh, Pinterest because they uh, we've, we've talked about before is the, the shelf life of a Pinterest pin is a lot longer. And so if you can afford to do both strategies, that is the way to go, I think. And that's what I recommend my clients uh, when I when I set up uh, online advertising for them. Alisa, I know you've had some experience with promoted pins as well. What's what's your take on it? Yeah, I feel much the same as Jeff. Um, when the engagement pins came out, I thought, why would you do that? Because when you do a pin for traffic, you get uh, repins free, you get clicks free, you get likes free. So why would I pay for those when I wasn't getting any traffic out of it necessarily? Um, but I had to try it, right? Because that's what we do. We try it. Uh, I thought, well, maybe it's really, really cheap. Maybe I'll get a ton more followers because of it. Uh, but that didn't happen. It was about half the price, which, yeah, it's great. But almost all the engagements were uh, clicks, which meant they just expanded the pin, like Jeff said, which to me, um, as a business owner who's looking for website traffic and leads, that does nothing for me. Um, you know, I don't, it doesn't matter if they look at my pin, <laughs> really. I want them to act on it. So to me, the engagement pin's re really worth anything. Um, but I have noticed, and I don't think I'm the only one, that the traffic promoted pins, the prices on that have been creeping up. So when I first started, it was like 50, I could get 15 cents a click. Um, mm -hmm. But I have noticed it going up and up. So that's what I suspect is happening is that now we have that other option. Now the traffic pins are going to be more. That's, I thought that would happen and it seems to be happening. Yeah, and I think that, you know, maybe for me, because one of my annoyances with uh, the new format, uh, actually not necessarily the new format, but something I used to like about Pinterest was that they kind of gave you the search traffic based on the terms, right? So if you, you looked, so before, you'll still read some old blog posts and say, by the way, do your keyword search. So again, if it was uh, the search term social media marketing, you would they would tell you, hey, by the way, did you know that 5,000 people in Los Angeles uh, that are on their iPhone are are searching for this term on a weekly basis, which is really great because I thought, okay, there's there's some keyword data. Um, you don't get that now. So th when you get promoted pins, uh, what happens is you, you kind of always have to make an educated guess uh, in terms of what is, is going to work, what's not. So you do have to spend a little money just to find out if, if the search term you used uh, is going to work or not. So in a certain way, I'm a little bit annoyed about that, that you have to actually... Um, you know, you have to kind of spend money to find out your own data first. Uh, so it's so some, something to kind of keep in mind. But like we all discussed, I think the one thing that's important that if, if you are planning to use promoted pins, uh, chances are they're probably not going to get any cheaper. Right. Uh, they're just going to keep rising in price. Uh, and don't be surprised, you know, another year, another two years from now, as more and more people talk about Pinterest and more and more reports talk about conversions, uh, that you're going to see those those click throughs uh, just really drive up in price the way that Google Ads has. Uh, so, again, if you if you haven't been on promoted pins, uh, definitely Google it. Google promoted pins. Um, it's only available to U.S. right now. It's still not available to the rest of the world. I'm not going to go on a Canadian rant about that. I'm not going to go on a, you're making me go on a Canadian rant. I don't like that. Um, but, but do definitely check it out. Um, so we're, we're going to wrap this up because we've got a few minutes left, but I just want to double check. Does anybody in our audience uh, on Blab today have any questions that they want to jump on board and ask about Pinterest? Uh, I know some of you have just kind of joined, so we're, we're, we're happy to answer any questions you have about Pinterest uh, or anything about Jeff's beard. That, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. What's hiding underneath? We do not know. There's no. nothing. Okay. Oh. So, I, so that's, so I guess, okay. Oh, we do have one. Oh, e pressure cooker. Um, did you want to kind of jump on and ask your question or, or did you want to just stay there? Cause you can jump on. Don't be shy. He wants, he wants to see if we can watch this later. He missed the part. Are you recording? <laughs> That's it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Basically. Yeah. No, I'm shy. OK. Um, yeah, this is actually being recorded. Uh, it's 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 our first blab. So I don't know exactly how this all works out. Hopefully you'll be able to get a recording out of it. Um, but uh, again, uh, so basically, let's uh, let's kind of have some final words. What's a what's a great final tip uh, that you have? I think Jeff wanted to say something. So, Jeff, you can say what you want to say. Um, I just want to say all three of us will be speaking next October in the Social Media Success Summit. 
So if you have any interest in not just hearing about Pinterest, but all social media marketing uh, stuff from big wigs like Amy Porterfield, Mark Schaefer, uh, Michael Stelzner, uh, make sure you head over there and, and socialmediaexaminer.com and look at their stuff because, uh, yeah, we'll be speaking. And hopefully we'll do more of these collabs. These are fun. I like these. Me too. Let's do some more. Me too. Um, thanks, Nancy. You're awesome. Yeah, thanks for making us do this. <laughs> 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 and the other no, thing all three of us are doing is a visual social media conference uh, being sponsored by Tailwind. Um, so that's visualsocialmediaconference.com. We have some fabulous speakers. We have Peg Fitzpatrick, Rebecca Radice, um, Kim Garst. It's going to be, it's going to be a really great time. And both those things are all online. So you can come, you no know, traveling on a plane and we hope you can come. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely wonderful. Uh, so again, I want to thank everybody for coming today on the blab and those that are maybe joining the recording. Thank you so much for joining in again. Um, you know, again, if you need to, to find out where these guys are, let's, let's announce our websites once more. Uh, so mine is www.mcngmarketing.com. That's where you can find me and Miss Wonder Woman. What site can people find you in? But I can hear you now. <laughs> alisameredith.com or scalablesocialmedia.com and I'm going to put all our URLs right there in the Sounds good and uh, Mr. Jeff C for the audio listeners of this recording where can they find the manly man You can find me at <laughs> Sorry I was thinking about Alisa uh, You can find me at manlypinterstips.com where we're always adding testosterone one pin at a time all right, great. So again, thank you everybody that's out there. I really appreciate it uh, for you to join us on this Pinteresting moment and our initial blab. Uh, again, if you do have any questions, you can always reach us at our website. Uh, we're happy to answer what we can. But again, happy pinning to all of you. <laughs>